and welcome to the Aladdin's cave of photographic equipment uh, that I currently use. So in this video I'm going to go through my digital still photography gear and also my vlogging video gear. Before we start, just want to go back in time uh, when we used one of these. So this is a, a very old film camera, Practica BMS Electronic. God, that must have been advanced. And in the film days, we used one of these and a roll of film like this. And we loaded the film into the camera, took our photographs that we wanted to go out and take, uh, rewound the film into the cassette and then took it down to Boots and then three or four days later we got some prints. And that was the basics of film photography. So in this video I'll also show you the computer side of things as well. I'll show you the software I'll use and I'll show you the speed that the Nikon D850 RAW files open up. Okay. Let's make a start. Let's put the film camera down and make a start on the digital world. So my digital camera is a Nikon D850 and for me this camera hits the ceiling in image quality. I do not need anything else. I don't need medium format. I don't need to go to mirrorless because mirrorless, when I've compared raw files from mirrorless to this, I cannot see any difference, so I don't see the reason to go to mirrorless. Maybe their performance in focusing is going to be better, but for me, I am ultimately very happy with the quality of the image that the Nikon D850 produces. And if anything, I'm going to get a second body so I can use this setup for as long as possible. It's absolutely a great camera and it continues every time I go out and I load a raw file in it continues to impress me with the quality of the images it produces. Alongside the lenses as well. So the first lens we'll talk about is the 24 to 70 uh, 2.8G ED glass. An absolute workhorse of a lens and the focal length of this, 24 to 70, you find yourself using that in many, many situations, many compositions that appear in front of you. This lens uh, does a great job at capturing them. Super sharp, super reliable. I've had this lens a long time. The only thing that started to happen is the rubber has gone uh, around the zoom part there. This rubber's got a bit loose, but I can live with that. It absolutely nails the shot every time. 14 to 24, big eye lens, superb, uh, again, quality lens, edge to edge sharpness, uh, 2.8G ED glass again, quite a heavy lens, but it does a great job. Challenging to use, as I said in a previous video, but when you do get uh, a composition for this, particularly at 14 mil, it really does give you a great result. 60 mil macro lens. I know some people have a preference for 100 mil, 105 mil, but I just love this 60 mil uh, Nikon lens. Again, 2.8G ED glass, super sharp, uh, super bright lens, does a fantastic job at capturing. Uh, macro shots and it doesn't do a bad job as well capturing portraits so it's quite good for a portrait lens next lens okay so uh, last year I was saving up for a Nikon 100 to 400 mil lens and uh, while I was doing that I kept looking at this uh, beast of a lens this is the Sigma 100 to 400 mil and I thought you know when I was reading the reviews and looking at the quality I thought Do you know what we'll get this and if it's not up to scratch we'll trade it in and eventually we'll buy the Nikon but once I bolted this onto the 
uh, Nikon D850. The image results are, uh, are amazing, to be honest. I was absolutely amazed at the quality. I'd seen some good examples, but once I started using it myself, um, boy, it does deliver some real quality images, super sharp. And yeah, I am absolutely chuffed to bits with this lens and obviously all my other lenses are Nikon. And uh, I surprised myself when I went with this Sigma one, but it absolutely is um, a really top quality lens. Sigma have done a superb job in designing this. Super happy with that. Okay, just before we go on to the video side, uh, batteries. So I've got four batteries for the Nikon D850. The Nikon D810 uses the same batteries. So when I upgraded to the D850, I could obviously use the same batteries inside that camera. So let's go on to uh, the video side of things. So I've got the Nikon uh, Z30, which is a mirrorless camera, uh, with the uh, DX 16mm to 50mm lens. And this is great because it's got a nice big flippy screen. So when you're videoing yourself, you can see yourself clearly in the screen. You can keep yourself within the screen when you're talking as well. It's got built-in sound, built-in stereo microphones, but I do use the Rode Wireless Go when I'm using this camera. Uh, and it gives superb 4K quality results. Very happy with that. But this camera also acts uh, dual purpose. I've also started using this for stock photography. When you go out with a Nikon D850, you stand out like a sore thumb. But when you carry this round, you do blend more into the background and that's very useful for when you're going out to do uh, stock photography. Blend in. Okay, so with this, if this is not sitting on the tripod, I use this, which is a Scorp uh, Mini Gimbal and the Z30 attaches onto here I can do some smooth uh, gimbal filming with it. It is quite a chunky piece of kit, so it's not something I've been using very often. Probably use it more in the summer, to be honest, um, because it's not weather sealed. This isn't. And this is partially weather sealed and does survive uh, in the rain, but that doesn't. And with our current weather, um, yeah, that gives us a problem. Shall we go on to tripods? Mm, yeah, with tripods. Okay, so I've got a small rig travel tripod, which is pretty light, pretty sturdy. I've had a few issues with it, but it's settled down now. It does go upside down as well, which is useful for macro photography. So it's not a bad uh, tripod, that. The next one is actually the Benro and I'm not going to get this out actually we'll, we'll just yeah this is a beast of a tripod it is very heavy but it is super sturdy when you you need it to be when you're doing long exposures on the beach or if you're doing waterfall shots it really does do the job and it can go high as well it goes right up uh, well above my height yeah um super high um, so it's a very very sturdy tripod indeed as well as that i have whoops let's put that down i've got the gorilla pod this is great for clinging onto fence posts or onto branches of trees for filming attaching the camera on there and uh, recently i've got this which is a selfie stick tripod and this extends right out there so it's yeah if i can show you that that extends right out and allows you to attach camera to the top here you can tilt the camera back if you're filming and another bonus on this as i said it's a tripod so you've got tripod legs that come out and you can just stick this on the ground 
or a table top to use. And this is this, very happy with this. 21 quid from Amazon and it's a Ulanzi. I think it's MT71. I'll put it, put it up if it's not an MT7. It is Ulanzi MT71. And that is a great piece of kit for walking and talking. And uh, it's got an attachment on top there to clip the camera on. Talking of which, the next thing I'm going to show you is something that I said I wouldn't buy when it came out because it's not weather sealed and I thought it was overpriced. However, having watched reviews, having seen Eddie Skelson uh, use it and had a look at his, I uh, had to bite the bullet and buy it. So I have got the, uh, the Pocket 3 Osmo, which is not weather sealed, DJI. Come on, our weather, it's so wet. We need weather sealed kit. But this is a fantastic piece of kit. I've had a play with this for the past week. I've not gone out and shot a video yet. I will go out next week and use this and I'll talk you through the settings that I've applied to this um, because you can really get some excellent video quality from this machine the the 4k footage is really sharp really clear the colors as well are amazing from this it is far better than the pocket osmo 2 which is filming this now but the other thing about this is the sound system so you get um, dji mic 2 and i've got two of them because i want to record in stereo and you can you can link these two microphones to the Osmo 3 to get stereo sound and it really is clear. It really is. And these, the benefit of these, these have got onboard memory for recording as well. So these record a backup just in case there's any kind of connection lost to the Osmo 3. But we'll, I'll talk about the settings on the Osmo 3 in the next video when you see some real footage from it so i think that concludes the video side of things so let's move on to the computer side of digital photography i missed something out a bit of an indulgence i think this is dji mini 2 drone and i say it's an indulgence because it's it's not cheap kit and it's not something I use very often. I will use this to, to introduce a video to showcase the area where I'm in, where I'm filming. And I'll also use this for taking still shots above. And I'll also, uh, it can also do some great pano shots as well. Um, and the great thing about this, if we think back to film days, if you wanted to do an aerial shot, you'd need to hire a helicopter. And I can just imagine coming home saying, uh, oh, I've hired a helicopter for tomorrow. Yeah. So whilst it's an indulgence, it is a powerful uh, machine for capturing imagery from the sky. And it does a great job. And for me, this again hits the ceiling in what I need in drone technology. I know drones, there's lots of other models above this you can get. But for me, it does 4K, it does some usable still shots and some great panos from the air. It is a luxury. It is a luxury indulgence, the DJI Mini 2, but does a great job. So that does complete the uh, film and video equipment. So let's talk computers. So under the desk, you can't see it. I've got a desktop uh, PC that's powered by an i9 Intel processor, 32 gig of RAM, and that powers the two screens that we see. And again, two screens is a luxury. You don't need two screens, but they're very good for when you're working. You can split the screens up. You can have two 
you can have Lightroom on one screen, Photoshop on the other, or sometimes I'll be working on the main screen and I'll be watching YouTube on the other. Uh, main screen is LG, uh, that's a 4K monitor, ah, it's crystal clear. When you're dealing with high res images that the D850 can produce, you can pixel peep to make sure you've got sharp detail. So luxury, two screens, it is a luxury, but it, it does give you comfortable workspace. Okay, so let's look at software then. So loaded on the machine, we've got uh, Photoshop and Lightroom. Let's just open up uh, a Nikon D850 RAW file in Photoshop. So this is opening up in real time there. So that's the RAW file opened and we can start to edit that. So that is pretty quick on an i9 processor. And let's now open Lightroom up. And again, this is in real time. And again, uh, Lightroom opens up pretty quick to the point where you can start to edit uh, the image. Now, I also use, let's just quit from this. I also use another piece of software, an old piece of software called Nikon Capture NX2. And the reason for using this is some filters that I bought a long time ago and they work in conjunction with Capture NX2 and they are Color FX Pro 3 filters and you've got two lots here. You've got styling and traditional and one I use quite often is called Glamour Glow and that puts a nice glow to the actual image. There's also, there's also other useful filters in the Color FX Pro lineup and there's lots there where you can do different creative things. You can buy that for Lightroom. So it can come as a plug into Lightroom. To be honest, I don't need to buy it when I've already got it in another piece of software. So that's uh, very useful to use. Now, I don't store any images whatsoever on my desktop PC. I use uh, portable hard drives. So over here, I've got a rack of two terabyte drives and four terabyte drives, which I use. And I've also got in this box, I've got duplicate copies of those drives as well. So I back up all my images and I don't store, I don't store processed images. The only images on the hard drives are raw. I don't save images that I've processed. And the reason for that is that we're constantly having new tools introduced into Lightroom. And I find I'm constantly learning different things about Lightroom and Photoshop. So if I want to reopen an old image and want to apply my latest processing knowledge to that particular image. Something I do use is this. This is a one terabyte portable SSD. So anything I'm working on current, so any current images I'm working on are on here. And once I've finished uh, and I've finished dealing with these images, then I delete them from there and I've still got the master raw files on the two copies of hard drives. Okay, when we go away, I've got uh, this laptop and this is quite a recent purchase. This was from Amazon Warehouse. So when you go on Amazon, you've got a drop down menu, click on Warehouse and you can see items that have been returned where they've had uh, a small fault on them or, or scratches. And the price new for this was £667 and I paid 350 for it. And when I got it, there was just a few blemishes, just a few marks on it. It booted up, it booted up as if it was new. I had to obviously load windows into it, etc. But again, this is uh, an i7 processor, 16 gig of RAM, and I've got the same software loaded on here that I've also got loaded on the desktop. So when I go away, I can uh, use this to start doing uh, editing of uh, video and uh, still images. So 
One thing I did miss out was video software. So on both machines, I've got video software to edit and produce these videos. And that's Pinnacle Studio 26 Ultimate. It is a bit clunky. It can crash, particularly when you're dealing with 4K video, but I've got used to it and, and uh, I just like it. I just like to use it so I can pull up with the occasional crash. It does do a pretty good job on uh, processing video and uh, yeah, it's just something I'll continue to use. So that is it. That's an absolute Aladdin's cave of kit. And I think when you're passionate about photography, as I am, you can never not have enough kit, believe you me. But I think I've reached the point now where I'm absolutely happy with my current lineup and I can't see myself needing to um, do any upgrading because the main thing for me is the end result image. I'm not worried about the bells and whistles too much on the kit. It's what that final image looks like. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel to see me going out and about and using all this kit. And uh, as I said on the next video, we'll talk a bit more about the Osmo 3. And uh, yeah, on that note, I'll see you later on the next one.